Well, everybody, as you've seen um, at the beginning, um, the signal does work, and it works with eye trains. So, what I'm going to do now is fit another one. And if you remember, we had two of these, didn't we? And uh, silly me, um, no research. So I just bought these two because I wanted the arm to go up and didn't think anything of it. But as you saw when I introduced that I bought them, they're very small, aren't they? And what I've discovered is that they are actually a home starter signal and they're designed to go on the platform, which is why they're so short. Um, so as you've seen, that's what I've done with the other one. And that's what I'm going to do with this one. So I will show you where it's going to go. Um, but first of all, I must emphasise um, this video using that signal and that um, control is for this type of signal. The newer type of day pole with the big square box underneath the baseboard uses, uh, I think it's an SC4 controller and not necessarily this one. Whether this would work with those, I don't know. So please be very careful if you buy the other type of signal, not this type, okay? So, uh, as I've said, that's gonna be fitted and I hope you'll follow me in fitting it. Um, I did actually find um, that first one fairly easy. Um, it's really the nerves when you're turning things on and setting them up that is a bit of a, yeah. Um, but what I bought, that and the signal works, which is what I was worried about. Um, but I've been, as I said, having read the instructions, I was fairly confident it would work. Um, and what about the, the two boxes the two delivery boxes that you saw one of those is from Hatton's and the other one is from Wales to Sheffield so what's in them and why did I have to order something from those two so watch to the end of the video or jump to the end if you want to find out why um, and part of the reason is is what I'm going to explain in how I did it okay um, so if you're going to use eye trades then it might be worth watching the next bit of this video because I feel it's worth setting it up in eye trains before you try attempting any fitting on the layout so I'm going to show that try and do it fairly briefly um, but if you are doing it in eye trains, then please watch. If you're just going to use this to have a, um, a momentary switch or some other switch that will operate the signal, you so obviously don't need to bother about eye trains. But obviously, with my layout, it is. So I think, with uh, no further ado, as somebody I don't can't remember usually says, let's get on with it, shall we? So cheers, everybody. I'll see you in a minute. So here we are in the switchboard of iTrains on my computer and what we basically need to do is to get one of these and this is the one for the signal you've just seen working at the beginning and as I'm fitting the signal to this part of the platform we need to fit one of those in here and very quickly um, first of all when you look at all the signals which are down here there aren't any uh, of the type of signal I'm fitting they're all uh, light ones aren't they as you can probably see and what we're going to use is the general signal which is what all my signals on here which work the Hornby uh, two aspect ones no problem and if you think about it the seven more signal is basically a red and a green isn't it but it's the red and the green changes because the arm goes up or down. So we're going to use one of these. So how do we do it? So very quickly, say we're going to put it uh, 
shall we say there you click on that square and remove it from the group and when it's removed from the group we can remove and there we are so now what we do is we highlight this one and we push just make sure that we've highlighted that push the space bar and there's a signal you need to make sure it's orientated correctly so ie the red is at the bottom and the green when it illuminates is at the top which i think it is so we we now need to um <clears throat> get it into the uh the group um so we highlight the, that part of the group then we uh, click on the signal and we add it to the group and click on an empty square and that should all be in so we then click on the uh, block and you can see that the signal is in there sorry I didn't quite get it in the middle of the screen but you can see that that signal is now in that block which is what you want we then highlight we get the actual signal up and we have to give it a name um, whatever you want to call it and you can see my hand doing the old keyboard and then after giving it a number um, we need to click all these off um, because if we don't it won't work um, I've covered this before you just need the red and the green um, working and as you can see we've still got uh, it's all sort of in there now we now need to go to the block and make sure we've uh, direction next which is the way we're going and then as you can see that has come up and you put that in there as a home signal and uh, go down the bottom and also fill is quite a good idea and okay and there we are and basically that's near enough it so we go back to the main board and what I've done now is I've highlighted it because um, you can try it so I've put the 101 on the rail there and I'm going to take it across to there and I push the route and you have to wait for the locomotive to start moving and then as it does you just click on the um, the block sorry I mean the sensor for that block and as you can see I'm doing here and it highlights as it goes round now do you notice now that that signal has turned to green and when I click on there again it goes back to red so that signal is working albeit in uh, on the computer so here we are everybody we're up in the loft ready to fit these and this is what we're going to be fitting today uh, which is exactly the same as the one you've just seen working and as we said it's a little bit short but it goes on the platform I'll show you uh, where it is in a minute and to operate this you seem to need one of these an SC3 and as I said earlier if you have the old the newer type with the big uh, box on the bottom of them um, which I think the servo ones you I think you need SC4 so yep so just make sure we're using the right stuff so we get some uh, instructions with the actual signal and basically it tells you how to fit them um, and it does say to use a, uh, a 14 mil um, drill um, but um, I would say and um, that it would be better I think I've used a 16 mil bit and I'll explain nearer the end of the video why I think that is right okay but with the SE3 you get all this lot and the important 
and I would say the most important thing is not to have any power on in your layout at all. Um, you need to fit the signal in wherever, cure your hole, and connect everything up before you put any power into your layout at all. Okay? So obviously we're going to need some sort of drill to drill the hole through the layout. And as you can see, my 14mm uh, bit is quite a long speed bit. Um, but I decided to use the 16mm one. Uh, you're going to need a little screwdriver to connect your wires in. And although you don't have to, what I usually do is drill a hole through first um, that is smaller than the point on the big drill to give it a, a, a direction really. And try and get this as vertical as you can, um, I would say. And obviously check underneath that there's nothing in the way. <laughs> Uh, either uh, a support member or wires or electrical boxes very important um, you're going to obviously need a vacuum cleaner to uh, clear up all the mess when you drill the hole and then for fitting basically I've got a pair of these which are very very good because at some stage you're going to have to connect wires to either your buzz wire or your um, control unit and I've got a pair of wire snips to cut the, the cable off that I need. And you'll need two little screws to hold the control unit up. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, that's about it. Obviously the instructions, to read the instructions, I can't emphasise it anymore, read the instructions. So I think the next bit is to go and show you where we're going to fit this uh, new signal. So here's the one you saw working, which is at the end of the long station, the long terminal station. And you might be wondering why I put it like this. Well, what I thought was we haven't got a signal to say it's OK to go across this point into the platform. Though I thought one here was quite useful. And I was thinking of putting one at the end of this one notwithstanding I've already got a, a light signal, two colour signal, but the reason I didn't do it here is that building completely obliterates it from over there so you'll never see it working unless you've got a camera actually you know in front of the train like I had. So I'm going to put it on here, down here. I'm going to get my finger in the right way because obviously trains do come round this way and they do stop here sometimes so I thought it was worth putting it here so that's where we're going to go so I've looked underneath and it is all nice and empty under there so the first thing to do is to drill your hole so um, here's where we're going to do it I'm going to take out the little station sign keep it out of the way and try not to knock all the figures off and the signal is going to go in approximately like that. Um, so we need to make sure that on this one it's okay, but with the other one I had to make sure that it didn't go over the edge of the slope. And to a certain extent it's the same with this one. So I'm going to get it sort of fairly closely there. Now what you might notice is on the cable there's this little yellow label. And basically what it's telling you is under no circumstances to put any power through the yellow cables. These are what go to that control unit to make it work or to your switch to switch it but under no circumstances put any power through it. So let's make a start. <clears throat> so I'm going to use the smaller drill to do this initial um, hole and obviously I've got to go through the platform and then through the base which in my case is conti board so it's a bit harder than maybe a normal even your ply really so let's have a go and there we are we're through so I've swapped the smaller drill for my bigger drill, this one, for no other reason more than it's actually uh, got a bigger battery and a bit more oomph. Um, you can obviously use a 240 if you want. So we're now just going to drill that. A 
I think we have a hole through. So as you can see, it did travel a little bit in the cardboard, so it's not ideal trying to do it through this. Um, and I'm obviously hoping that uh, the square base on, on the signal will cover the hole. But uh, I had no problem at all doing the plastic uh, Hornby um, hole. So I didn't film this because it is really, really fiddly, but obviously once you get your hole through, um, take that yellow label off the end of the cable because it gets in the way. Twist all your cables together and then feed them through your hole after obviously taking off the, the nut that's on them. Uh, feed it through. Now in my case I had a bit of problem. Um, obviously with the going through the platform and then through the board it's I find it quite hard to get it dead uh, vertical and it is important that it is sitting nice and flat on your surface so the the black uh, plastic base is flat on your surface um, and watch at the end of the uh, program or at the end of the video if you wish to find out what happens if you don't I put the locking nut on and it's a case of just trying to hold it while you screw it on and then just come up and finally fit it um, and put it in the right place and then try and hold everything while you tighten it up. Do not under any circumstances tighten it more than finger tight. Don't put pliers on it, anything. Just screw it tight. It's not going to go anywhere when it's sitting there. It's really now a case of uh, getting under the layout and connecting it up. So we'll get there next. So here we are under the layout and there is the uh, signal underneath with the cables coming out as you can see. And as I'm going to use the same control unit as I did for the one you've seen working, which is uh, sitting right, so here are my there, four wires coming in and they go into the unit there that is on the underside of the unit, underside of the layout. And it does say in the instructions not to screw this tight up to anything and also not to have any cables or metal anywhere near the back because I'll show you later on the bench what it's like on the back of this. And these cables have basically got to be connected into this unit because it will use, it will do two signals and that's all. And the yellows have got to go to one side of it. One side of it's already got the yellows in for the signal you've seen working. And the, the red and the black are twisted together and go into the same connections. So let's go on the bench and have a look at the unit, shall we? So here's the control unit um, before you put it on. And as you can see, it's well la labelled. Um, so signal one yellows to the... Uh, left hand side the red and the black to the middle connections and then the yellow connect wires from signal number two which is the one we're fitting now to the right hand side on this side you have your uh, wires in for power um, and it doesn't seem to matter which way round it goes and the little button here is for um, setting it um, and you set it once or push it once this is when you've got the power on and it's sorted once to do signal one and then twice to do signal two which is fairly logical and as I was saying underneath there's an awful lot of circuitry so obviously if you are to cross these with a wire or something or even tin foil it could be a quite an expensive um, operation couldn't it at 30 31 pounds each so i hope that helps so i'm not going to show you me connecting it under the layout because a, i don't think you'd see what i'm doing and b you need to be concentrating uh, but i am going to unscrew it from the under the base because it's going to be a lot easier to connect in so i'll come back to you when i've done that So everybody, as you've uh, seen uh, with the photos I took, it's all connected and I've screwed it back underneath the baseboard. 
um, and it is loose it wobbles um, which does help because it's easier to push that little button that we need to do so the only thing you need to do um, now is as you can see I've got my DR5000 uh, Digi Central up um, and this is all we actually need to um, program this now obviously if you're not going to use iTrains or DR5000 then you will need to connect those yellow wires into the switch of your choice and it will probably mean extending the wires I've been lucky in that where I place these two signals they, the wires are long enough to reach the control part so what we do with this and obviously with other systems it might be slightly different but we go to switch and what we get then is this board here now if you notice it goes from 41 to 56 in this particular case that's because the last time I used it I had to set number 50 which is the one over there and what we're going to use this time is number 52 so I'm going to go and push that button twice this time so that it will program it on number 52 so I shall go under the board again and do that when I went under there the yellow the, the red light was on so it proves that it's powered and I've just pushed that button twice so I'm now going to click this I'm going to do that one and hopefully that will now have stopped flashing yes that's now stopped flashing under there which means it has been um, programmed so I'm going to see if it actually works he says and yes it's just gone up and it's just gone down great so to all intents and purposes that is now finished but because I'm going to use eye trains you, you when you saw me doing all that stuff on the computer downstairs you set it up so I'm now going to go out of this and I'm going to bring up eye trains now I'm going to turn off the camera because it takes quite a while for eye trains to load so uh, excuse me a while so uh, I have now got eye trains operational and it's connected and all the uh, light signals have come on and um, when eye trains loads it sets everything to what you've asked it to do and I asked it to set that new signal to stop so it should be at 90 degrees but when it set it it went up which means it's actually uh, the wrong way round now with a switch if you're using a switch it doesn't really matter because you'll know which which is which and you can just uh, do it accordingly but with it, it's obviously eye trains needs to know that the signal is at green when it's green and red when it's red and the easiest way I found of doing this is if I click on the signal so I will do that now and go to the properties and if you remember we had the stop and the go and the easiest way to correct this is if I double click the red and make it green and double click the green and make it red that should actually sort the problem out hopefully so that is now green and that is red so that as far as I'm concerned is finished um, it's all in it's working and the proof of the pudding obviously is to run a train round so I'm gonna turn off now and I'll get a train running on that light on that uh, line and we'll see if it uh, does what it needs to do
So everyone, uh, as you've seen, this, this works. So we've got the one here, which uh, I hope you've seen uh, working with the train, the engine going through, or in this case, a train, wasn't it? And we've got the one here, which works quite well, as you saw at the beginning. So I'm now going to go downstairs and I'll explain about the two boxes that we had at the beginning. What's that all about? See you in a minute. So, uh, we're all down here in the uh, in the uh, lounge, and uh, I'm going to explain about those couple of boxes. So, time for a cup of tea. It's just gone ten o'clock in the morning, and this is my mug with the actual picture square to the mug this time. Oh, lovely! You can't have a video without a mug on it, can we? Or oh, two mugs in this case, with a mug. And yes, I do feel a bit of a mug. Um, so I'll show you a little picture of what was in those two boxes and then I'll explain. So as you can see, um, I bought two of these And I bought another one of the little small ones, the, the ones that go on the platform. Why did I do that? And also another control box. So there's no final way, no other way of showing you, but that was one of my original signals that I was going to fit. And to say I've comp comprehensively destroyed it is, is understating it. It doesn't work. The light won't work. The... Um, the actual arm won't go up automatically, although it does still, I believe, go up. Um, or does it? Oh, it's got to, yeah. So, yeah, the arm still goes up, and it's basically a, a, a wire with a spring on the end. Goes onto a little platform that goes up and down inside here. Um, so how did I manage to make a right old mess of this? Um, and I even broke the, the tower off. Um, and I glued it back on. If you remember, I said to use um, preferably a 16mm um, drill, which is what you saw me do. Um, and what it does, it gives it a little bit more tolerance. And fitting that first um, signal, I did use the 14mm, the, the which is what they say. Um, and as in the second one, it didn't go square, but I've learned. <laughs> I just thought it wouldn't hurt just to, just to force it down slightly to get the base flat and then do it up, which I did. So I never actually did it over tight, but by forcing it down, it actually broke that base away from the, the post. Um, now, whether that wasn't they don't glue them, I don't know, or whether there wasn't much glue on, I don't know. But it just, I, I went to take it out and it was all like this. Um, and yeah, and it's ruined. Tried to, I tried to get it to work and it did sort of start to work. Um, and once I thought it was working, I glued this back on with some super glue. Um, and then when I tried it again, it didn't work. So then I just break that off and obviously super glue holes and that's how I managed to break that. And in the process, I think I then broke the connection for the LED light, which doesn't work either. So completely comprehensively buggered it. And you know, there's 27 pounds worth of signal gone up in smoke. But there we are. You learn, don't you? So why two boxes? So um, I got the control box again from uh, Riles of Sheffield, because they had one, but they didn't have any of those signals. Um, so I went to Hatton's. Now for the the one that I broke, uh, I had to pay two pound more. Um, but interestingly, the big ones, which are these, and I'll see if I can show you what it is. I'm hoping that will focus. Yes, there we are. Um, these were the same price. So these, as you can see, are taller and will go on, on the ground in, in, in effect. Um, so I'm going to fit these, and as I said, I've got two of those, as you saw with the, with the thing. So I'm going to fit those, and I obviously needed another control box to control them. 
but everything's worked, hasn't it? So chalk it down to experience and yeah, we learn. But that's why I think it's worth having a bigger hole um, than they recommend. Um, because if there's a little bit of tolerance, it doesn't matter. Um, and I think part of the problem with this was fitting it through the platform and then into the baseboard. Hopefully with the new ones, it'll just be straight, you know, through the baseboard and with that two mil, it should be fine, hopefully. And it's easier to get it, you know, vertical. So I thank you for watching this and any new subscribers that have come on, I've had a few. And finishing uh, now, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, I hope it'll help you fit some if you want to do it. And remember, you don't need to use eye trains to control them. You can use a, a momentary switch or, or some other way of, of doing them. Um, but hopefully it should be basically the same principle. So, time to go. And um, watch out for my next one, whenever that might be. Okay, everybody? Bye.